Hi everybody, welcome. This is Shannon from Crochet Shay, and today we'll be making this beautiful washcloth. It's actually very simple, easy for beginners to make. It's just a repeat of half double crochet stitches all the way throughout, and then I'll also teach you how to make this border. You can make the washcloth with or without the border. It still works great either way. So let's get started. For your supplies, you'll need any cotton yarn. You want it to be 100% cotton if you're going to be using this in, in the kitchen or your bathroom. Um, cotton is great for hot things and hot pads and things like that and it's very durable, easy to wash. Look on your label and make sure it says 100% cotton, no matter which brand you use. And then we'll be using a size H, 5.0 millimeter hook some scissors, your darning needle, and I'll also be teaching you how to use a variety of stitch markers for you beginners, so I'll help you learn how to count your stitches. So let's get started. So to start our washcloth, we'll do a slip knot. Wrap around your two fingers, insert your hook under, pull through. However you want to make a slip knot is fine snug up to your hook and we're going to chain 25 we completed our 25 chains next I'll demonstrate for you the half double crochet stitch we're going to do half double crochet stitches today so we're going to go in the second chain from the hook Yarn over, insert in the second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, you have three on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three. That's your first stitch. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. Yarn over, insert in the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Sometimes this middle one is hard to pull through, especially when you're learning, so I do I count one, wiggle to get the second one, and then the third one. Sometimes a wiggle wiggle helps. Pull through one. See the second one is tricky. Turn your hook, wiggle it through the second one, and then the third one. And this is what they should kind of look like. Yours might be a little loose a little more loose or a little tighter than this and that's okay especially when you're first learning just keep going keep going and I'll meet you at the end okay we've come close to the end I'll do the last two stitches with you so we yarn over Start the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three, yarn over, insert into this last chain here where our slip knot is, yarn over, pull up a loop, you have three, yarn over again, pull through all three. So in the last video I showed you how to count your stitches and you'll want to count these V's. Never count the one that's on your hook. So start with this one and count one, two, three, four, five, all the way to the end and you should have 24. But this is the last one right here. Now to continue on we're going to chain one and turn our work the other way. Now you have something to hold on to here. 
and then we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into this first stitch right here on the end. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three. Wiggle it if you have to to get it through. Now that's our first stitch in the second row and what we'll do is I'll show you how to use stitch markers. As you continue to build this washcloth up, you have markers on each side to show you. Now you should have your 24 and just go up and up. And we'll move these stitch markers when you get to the last stitch. A stitch marker can be lots of things. You can use a piece of yarn or a bobby pin. I have these stitch markers here that you can get on Amazon, pretty inexpensive. And you slide it through your first stitch here. So now when you come the other way, you'll know where your, your last stitch is. Continue on to the end, you should have 24 more stitches. And I'll see you there. Now to mark the first stitch of my next row, I'll do it like this. We're going to chain one to go up in height, turn our work, and then just lay the piece of yarn over top of your work like this. See, it's just laying over top. Then we'll continue on with our stitches, yarn over, Insert the hook, pull up a loop, and then do our half double crochet. Try to ignore that piece. I'll do one more so you can see where this scrap piece is holding. And it works just like the other stitch marker. It's just kind of like a flag waving there showing you where your stitch is on on the end. And we're almost at the end of this row and I'll show you how to move the stitch marker like I was talking about before. So this is the second to the last stitch. So with these plastic ones I remove my stitch marker, yarn over, insert through the stitch that was just where the stitch marker was, yarn over, pull up a loop, and complete my stitch. Then, I know that's the end of my row, chain one, turn the work the other way, and then I, for the plastic ones, I yarn over, insert, and complete this the first stitch before I put it in. So I'll do like this, then I see that's my first stitch, and put the stitch marker through it. Now I've also seen some people do this nifty trick and use a bobby pin to mark their stitch. Put it through like that, and you're not going to miss that spot at all. You're going to know right where it's at. And I'll back it up and I'll show you if you want to do, do it like that, you can chain one, turn your work, and then take your bobby pin and right here insert it right there on the hook on that loop and that loop is going to become the next stitch so you'll yarn over work your half double crochet yarn over and do another one and you'll see it's right there it's marked so that's a third way to mark your stitches I'm going to continue working these stitches it's great practice. It's great practice and a great gift. A gift to yourself or a gift to 
a friend or family member and it teaches you how to control your tension and how to work your stitches even and the more that you make them the better they'll get the faster you'll get and I call it my therapy crochet is very meditative I can do these since it's the same stitch over and over I can do this and watch TV or listen to a show and it's very calming washcloths you can also take on the go with you because it's a small project we'll just keep going up with this same stitch and I haven't decided how many rows we'll do yet we'll just keep going and then once I get to the end of it I'll let you know how many I did so I'll finish these last few stitches with you I ended up doing 17 rows and I'll show you how I came by that number let's get this last stitch in here and then I'll show you how to finish it up so 17 rows we counted these are two you can see there's kind of a line here between every second row so I counted them that way 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and then just one row makes 17 and if you crochet looser than this or tighter all you have to do to see how many rows you have is fold it and if it makes a triangle then you've got a good square you might have to add a row or take off a row if yours turns out like this then you would keep going or remove a row whichever it is so you can have a nice square washcloth so we'll cut our yarn we want to leave about a six to eight inch tail always cut over here because if you cut the loop here trust me I've made that mistake it's not good so we'll pull this loop through all the way out and then that starts to secure your work so it won't come unraveled now if you want to stop here that's fine and wonderful it looks great very functional as it is I'll show you how to sew in the tail I can find my needle here we go take your end and thread it through your needle this one I'm using has a larger eyelet so it makes it pretty easy to use and then we'll go to the back of our work I like to bring the needle down one stitch through there and then just start weaving it through enough stitches just about the length of the needle six or eight stitches across don't pull it too tight because you want to keep this end squared and then turn and go back through the same stitches this is where my yarns coming out don't go back right through there because it might come undone skip one little piece right here so you can just weave in and out and go back and forth I like to go three times. You can do two. Two is probably enough for this one. We'll do one more. Just because we don't like our work getting done. Undone. We did all that work. We want it to stay. gently get the other end and then 
that will stay. That's not coming out. You can wash it. You can do anything with it. It's not coming out. Clip the yarn. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to add this really pretty border to your washcloth. 